this is Stephanie from the Lindsay Leck Vintage Treasures and I am in New Holland PA today at a little thrift store called Lucky Dog and it's more of like a flea market with vendors but as you can see there's just a lot of stuff to look at several big rooms and we're gonna take a look so this place is very very large there are many, many rooms, little nooks and crannies all over the place. And there's even a downstairs. You have to go down the basement stairs on the inside and leave the building and go to the next door and go into the basement. So I thought it was a very interesting setup. And this mask, I do take a look at it. I thought it was very interesting. It didn't have any marks, but I did feel it was a souvenir piece. It was missing quite a few of the feathers as well. And I almost dropped it. I was juggling a lot of different items at this time. Because I did not pick up a basket when I came in. And these jugs, I do love these stoneware jugs and crocs as well. They do very well for me at my booth. Um, these were very uh, more of a collector's price, so I did not pick any of them up, but I do appreciate them. And these shelves are just full of items, and I can see how it's very easy to miss things when it's this full and trying to film at the same time. This is all very new to me, and I do realize that... Uh, I don't always put the item fully in the frame, so I have to apologize for that. Uh, this next piece I pick up is a silver overlay glass piece. It is just beautiful. I'm not sure why I didn't pick it up. It was $10, and this booth was half price at the time. And that's a good reason to go back and shop, right? And... I did think this was redware at first, but I believe it's just painted to look like that. Again, like, there's just so much stuff to look at. It was really hard to focus and really concentrate on what you might have been looking at while you're filming. And I do appreciate those that, that do this and do it well. So I have... I can only go up from here, so. I do pull up this vase real briefly here with butterflies. It is beautiful, and it is very modern. So I did put it back, but I do sell a lot of modern items in my booth and in my eBay shop, so I'm not afraid to pick them up. It just wasn't something I thought I could resell at the time. And... There's some puzzles in this booth that I do come back for later, but I don't show that on film. You'll see them in the haul video section. But they have a lot of old vintage puzzles that, and I just love puzzles. There's horses. Those are cute. I didn't see those before. And some of the booths were very crowded and hard to get into. You can see me trying to get out of there. And these little elf shoes, I guess you would want to call them, or little slippers or whatever, they were very cute. I'm going to pick them up here in just a moment. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I thought those were cute. I, I did pass on them for now, but I'm thinking I should have probably picked them up. I almost dropped that one too, see? Better fingers. And this group of ladies, this is us from the old factory, Antiques and Crafts. There's Jolene, myself, Kathy, Connie, and Faith. And behind us is the Lucky Dog. This is the Freedom Thrift Store in New Holland. This is a newer shop that I had never been to before. And I thought I had been to most of the thrift shops in Lancaster County, uh, but I never had gone to this one. And I was so excited to go inside 
I totally forgot to film. And you'll see the goodies that I purchased in the haul. Here in Goodville, Pennsylvania. And this is the first time I'm at this thrift store. It's called Used To Be. And it's kind of like a vendor flea market type place. And let's go and check it out. I didn't even make it three feet in the door. And I found these cute vintage Santas. I just love these. I have a nice collection of about 16 or so. Plus a large brushed in. And I do collect all Santa ornaments for my tree. And most of those are vintage. I will buy some of the blown glass newer ones if they're interesting. But you can see this place is just packed. It was really hard to focus on what to look at. And you can see here someone has a nice collection of Raggedy Ann and Andy. And there's even a very large bin of the stuffed versions of all different types, different eras. You can see there's really an eclectic array of items here. So you just have to really focus and do the best you can to find the goodies. And this next shelf, I was ecstatic over. This shelf was mostly vintage salt and pepper shakers. And these green cats were adorable. And one of the other ladies did end up purchasing those. But the Santa and Mrs. Claus I would have taken with me. However, he was kind of creepy with his eyes. So Santa stayed on the shelf, which usually doesn't happen with me, but I was excited on this shelf. I, at one point, just couldn't put them in my basket fast enough. Even looking through as I'm doing this voiceover, I see many sets I should have also picked up as well. These cats were absolutely adorable and they went in my basket. And the poodles I do pick up and the ice cream cone sets, there was just so many to look at. It was, I was just too giddy, I think, at this point to really look at them all. And those kissing frogs are cute. These cats remind me of mid-century modern. And I did not pick them up. And that's another set I wish I would have. And there's just so many. These cats are adorable. They're peeking out of a basket. They are Jap uh, Japanese. They're from Japan. Most of the sets were, I would say, Japan. Some of the ones I picked up were Hong Kong. And these little poodles are Bone China. And you could feel the difference in them. They were just adorable. Those girls are adorable too. And you'll see me here in a moment. With the pigs. They were kissing pigs. Their noses were magnetic. However, I didn't pick those ones up either. And wishing I probably should have. But again, there was just so many of them. And they were a dollar fifty a set and these owls were cute too and I don't know why I didn't pick them up but I got distracted by these girls these are apple heads and they're anthropomorphic and they were just darling and those do go in my cart and I'm looking at a set of peas and they lay flat it was something I hadn't seen quite like that before and those do go in my basket as well. There was just so many to look at. I keep going back to the green cats. <laughs> you can see the penguins back there. I do grab those. They were uh, plastic type and they did have a squeaker in them or a noisemaker when you shake them and 
there's just so many cute ones. That set I'm picking up now that I don't have fully in frame. They were salt and peppers, but one had a corkscrew at the bottom and the other one had a bottle opener, which is something I have never seen before either. And probably wishing I should have got that one as well. There was just so many to look at. I just noticed those cute little oranges back there with the faces. And this place was just wonderful. And I'm looking at this matchbox cover. And I would have picked this up. However, when you look inside, there was an added piece. And there's no way a matchbox would have actually fit into there with that. And it didn't come out. So I'm not sure what the purpose of it was. If you know, you can let me know in the comments. And then I turned around and I found a spinning cabinet with more salt and pepper shakers. And did you see what I just saw? Yes, those. And she's giving us the stink eye. Look at her. Isn't she adorable? I was ecstatic about this set here. These are Holt Howard's 1958. Now, she's missing her noisemaker. And I was a little hesitant at first. And you'll see me starting to put them back. And then I realized this case was also $1.50. So they immediately went in my basket. I felt there was still quite a bit of resale value there. Even though she was missing her noisemaker. The other cat's noisemaker wasn't working anyways, so I don't feel it was a big issue because the salt and pepper section still worked if somebody would want to use them. And these chefs are adorable. I just thought they were cute. They merely made me smile. And those are from Japan as well. Or on a little bit of a bigger side, taller side. But this was just great. I just kept picking and picking and picking. And see more in this case that I left behind. That I hope to go back and get. And I believe these are like Mother in the Kitchen or something similar to that. These were from Hong Kong. And they were a plastic they did have some prayers on the front or sayings, and I just thought they would be great. I totally miss those grapes. Do you see those grapes? They are anthropomorphic, and the the girl is resting her head on arms, and I totally miss that. Those definitely would have come home. I know I sound like a broken record right now, but I was so ecstatic about the shelf and this in this cabinet here I just these are big sellers in the booth some of these will even go online definitely the Holt Howards will go online and they just I was just too excited and I had been the first one in our group to reach this section so I was getting prime picking with the with, uh, Five of us from the antique mall in here, you know, we all like different things. But some of the ladies did come back and they did take some home. Not as many as I did. And I go back because I see this garlic set. And I don't know why I didn't pick them up either. So definitely look for them the next time I go in. I put them back for some reason. I did research those when I got home and realized I really should have picked them up. All right, now for the haul. I did stop at three different places today. The first place was somewhere I had gone to before, but it was before I started reselling. So it was really new for me for thinking of it in reselling oh, ways. And that first place was Lucky Dog. It is in New Holland, right on the main street. I believe that's Main and Railroad Avenue. Um, it's considered like a thrift store, but it's more of 
individual vendors and like flea market type uh, establishment. Um, it had many different levels. You could be lost in there for a long time. Um, and I went with four other ladies from the Hummelstown Antique Shop that I have a booth at. We all have booths and that's the Old Factory Antiques and Crafts. And um, this was the first time we all got together and went out uh, looking for treasures and, and picking and things for resale. And then another lady came, which was a friend of one of the other ladies, and we had a great time. Um, and we had those cars stuffed. We took two to the different places and they were packed by the time we left. I got in this bag, it was $1.50, and it has some needlepoint already done. And this one's really nice. This one's great for um, St. Patrick's Day. So I want to get this one up in my booth. And this one says, it's a four leaf clover. And one says, one leaf's for hope and one is for faith. And one is for love, you know, and God put another in for luck. So I think this one will be uh, great. I don't worry about framing these. Um, so I paid $1.50 for the three, so 50 cents each, and I'll ask about $8 for this. It's in excellent condition, just needs a frame. Uh, this one here it says, God sees, let's see, God sees you, but he understands. I had a hard time trying to read that last word when I first got it. God sees you but he understands. And then this one is a welcome, I believe, with a goose. Yep. And this is with goose, and it just says, or geese, and it says welcome. Again, these are all finished. They're in great condition. They just need framed. And I also bought, I love vintage puzzles, and they do really well at my booth. Um, I have tried to sell vintage puzzles on eBay and I find uh, with the fees and everything that you have to take an account for, plus your packing materials, that I can get the same price at the booth and I don't have to ship it, I don't have to list it, I don't have to take all that time, I'm not getting charged extra. So, I mean, if these sell for $12 on eBay and they sell for $12 in the booth, I'm gonna stick them in the booth. So these are old Fisher, um, not Fisher, these are Play School, printed in the USA by Golden Press. These don't look like they've ever been taken out of their puzzle frame. They look like they've never come out. They're in pristine condition. And they will go in the booth for $12 each. And I have a lot of puzzles that I've I've been going th selling through them really fast. Okay, so that was the first place. The second place we went to, I'm trying to think of what that was called. That was called Freedom Thrift. Um, so we started in New Holland, and Freedom Thrift is a new place. I had never heard of it, and I thought I knew all the thrift stores in Lancaster County, but apparently I don't, and. Um, we went and I had a great time. I found a few things at that one and most of it is Easter and it is modern Easter, but it will still do really well at my booth. The first item I got was this paper mache bunny. You could just put a fake plant in it. Um, I could imagine some boxwoods or something in here. Um, and I paid a dollar. And I just think she's quite cute. And I have her priced for $8 for in my booth. At that same place, I did find a pig. And it is a vintage, it is a vintage pig planter, probably for a nursery, like a baby shower gift or something with a with flowers that would have come in. I just thought he was adorable, or she was adorable. She has one little boo-boo right here, but I don't really think that detracts from her too much. Um, I paid two for her, and I have her priced at $8 as well. 
I just think she's too cute to pass up. Okay, and that same place, I did get this rabbit here. I just thought he had a lovely face. Just look at those eyes. And it's made with burlap and some kind of like grass that they've shaped onto the face, onto like styrofoam or something like that. I just thought he was adorable. And I think I paid $3 for him and I'm selling him for 12 at the booth. The other two items I got there are identical. So I'm only gonna pick up one. And I got two of these. It's It looks like the vintage frosted wreaths and it has Easter eggs on it. Now these are modern, these are not vintage, but would fit in with someone's vintage decor. I just think these are lovely. And I paid, I believe, $3 for them. And I'll list, and list them. I will have them in the booth for $18. I think they are that great. And I believe someone will fall in love with them as well. If not, they'll make great decor in my own home. And I also purchased this vanilla extract bottle. And it has a paper label that is in rough condition, but when you can find bottles that still have any parts of their paper, paper label to them, people still do highly um, collect them. It's better if it would have been all intact, but this is how I found it. It is Rawling Vanilla, and I paid $3 for this, and I think I can get about 10 for it at the booth. The last place we went to, was my favorite little new place I never knew existed. I am so in love with the place. I'm already planning on going back next week. Um, and it was called Used To Be, and it is a thrift store, but it's more of like a flea market inside with vendors. And I didn't know until we left that it was actually a sister store to the first one we went to, Lucky Dog. So the owner has multiple locations, which I did not know that. And the vendors, I mean, it is just, you saw in the videos, it's just full of stuff. They're just, it stuff's everywhere. You don't know where to look. Um, and I just, I fell in love with it. And I am a huge vintage Santa lover and I don't think I stepped three foot in and I already had found my first two items and these are for me to keep in my collection. Um, but I love these 1950s, 1960s Santas. Isn't he just lovely? I just love his face. He is just a cutie. And this one I found was $6. And then this one here was for four. And I have a whole hoard of them. I think probably have mm, 16 of them or so that I put out at Christmas of these, like this size and up. Um, I have a lot of other vintage Santa ornaments, things like that, but these are more like the dolls and these are not going anywhere, but into my Christmas box. The other big thing, um, that I got there were salt and pepper shakers. They had a whole shelf and then a whole nother like turnstile type cabinet full of vintage salt and pepper shakers. And at one point I could not get them in the cart fast enough or in my basket. It was like, oh, I want those and those and those. And then I realized when I did go back and look through the vintage, there were more I should have taken and I didn't get them. And I think some of the ladies I were I was with did get some of the ones I wishing I had. But from what I understand, the lady who has the booth has a ton more to bring in. And so I'm hoping by next week she might restock and I will gladly go pick up some more. So 
I bought 12 sets of salt and pepper shakers for $1.50 a piece. And I'm just giddy over these. They are just simply fantastic. This first set that I purchased, it has a sticker that says Fine Bone China, and they're these poodles. And they are just in excellent condition. These are gonna be listed on eBay in my shop. Most of these are going up to the booth. There's a few that are going on my eBay shop. This next one, I think my daughter actually wants to fight me for, are these cats. And these cats are not really plastic. They're more like a celluloid. And they have their little salt, or their little plugs in the back of their heads. And the salt does come out the top, salt and pepper. But they also have the little like noisemakers in the bottom of them, but they don't work anymore. But they're still quite lovely pair of kitties. These are one of my favorite ones as well. Those are going on the eBay shop as well. And these are all Japan. There's a set of peas. And they lay flat. I've never seen anything like that before. I just thought they were great. The rest of these are going in the booth for about $6 a set. Again, these are all vintage Japan. Here's owls. The owls have googly eyes. Aren't they cute? And this next set of cats, these are adorable. These have their little whiskers. I don't know if you can see that. And they have their own little baskets and they're peeking over their baskets. And they are marked Japan as well. There's nothing wrong with these guys. They are in fantastic condition. Another set. I did try to clean these ones up a little bit. So they're a little dark, probably from sitting out on the shelf in the kitchen. But again, these are made in Japan and they're little sailors. They remind you of like salt and pepper, the wooden ones, but they're little sailors. And their little hats screw off and you can put in your salt and pepper. That sounds odd, doesn't it? And then the next set I have here, these are actually plastic and they remind you of is it Mother in the Kitchen? That line of um, ladies, they usually have some kind of message or prayer on the front of them. Um, this one says, give us thanks. Or it says, give us this day our daily bread. If I could read. This one says, we give thee thanks for all thy gifts. And they're like a plastic. These are made in Hong Kong. And... I just thought they would be great for someone's collection and those will be going into the booth. Next pair of salt and pepper shakers are these penguins. They are a plastic and they're made in Hong Kong. And these ones, their little heads, their hats pull apart and you put your salt and pepper in the top here and you slide them back in. I hate penguins. My daughter will be the first to admit she couldn't believe I actually bought penguins, but I said, hey, if it makes me money, I'm going to buy them. The only reason I will buy penguins because I thought someone would love them. Not me. On this next set, I felt I couldn't get these ones in my cart quick enough. They were just so adorable. These are apple heads with bodies and a face. So these are what you would call anthropomorphic. And... <coughs> They are just darling. They are the cutest little ones. I just love these. And th these will be going in the booth as well. And the best pair by far. I couldn't believe these were in the $1.50 shelf. I wanted to scream. Was the set of Holt Howard cats. And 
I'm only holding one up because these were in great condition. The only issue was that the noisemaker was missing out of the other one, but it still had, you could still use the, the salt and pepper part, but the squeaker in this one doesn't work. And the other one was missing a squeaker and they were fantastic shape other than that. With the exception, I dropped her last night and she lost her head. So I mourned for a little while this morning with her and I'm going to fix her and keep her on my sh shipping shelf so she can watch me and I'll keep mourning her. I will still list the single Holt Howard cat because it does consistently sell by itself. Um, someone could have broke one like I did and they need to replace the other one. And so this one will still get listed in my eBay shop. I'm just really disappointed that I broke it and I don't understand how I broke it. I, I'm still trying to figure that one out. But that was fantastic. I cannot wait to go next week and go back up and find some more goodies. And that does it for the haul. I'm so glad you stopped in to watch. Um, technically, this is my second video. Um, and you're like, well, where's the first? Well, the first video was finished. We, I completed it. It was of an auction that I had gone to. And um, I showed you the preview and went through the haul on what I bought and why I bought it and went to post it Sunday and it was gone. Somehow I deleted it. Rookie mistake. And I'm learning from my mistakes. So my daughter's behind the camera shaking her finger at me because she helps edit. And I'm heartbroken. My first video is gone. So technically, this is first. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you would like, comment, and subscribe, and come check out the next time. Thank you for coming. Bye.